Hi everyone, this is Sharon. Today in this video, we are going to see about five interesting NLP projects that can be added to your portfolio. All these projects are based on the real world data set. Before getting into the projects, first let us understand why is it important to have an NLP project in your portfolio. There are enough algorithms for us to focus on, but why do we need to have an NLP project? It is an interesting question. The answer for the question is, as per research based on the International Data Corporation, it is expected that by 2025, 80% of the data set would be unstructured data. Until now, like even in the recent past, many organizations were making strategic decisions where uncovering the insights based on the structured data. But now, organizations have realized that there is a huge number of insights that is present in the unstructured text data. And there is a large volume of these text data getting generated every single minute and organizations have realized that it is important for them to focus on all these unstructured data in order to make impactful decisions. Some of the use cases that organizations are carrying out in the NLP area are risk sensing, competition analysis to see what are all the competitions are doing, like how different they are doing, what the people are have perceiving about their competition and about themselves. Chatbot, you would have seen like many organizations are having chatbots. These chatbots will be able to respond to simple inquiries and they will also be able to guide you to the right channel based on your question. Many organizations are doing market research based on the unstructured data. Previously, organizations were relying on the questionnaires, but now they have realized that it needs to be natural and they need to focus on the unstructured data that is generated on various social media platform in order to understand what is happening in the market. So today in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you five interesting use cases that can be implemented based on the real world data set. And let's get into the video and then go through each one of those use cases and see what can be done. The first use case is analyzing the impact of tweets on Bitcoin price. Recently, you would have noticed how a single tweet from Elon Musk has driven the price of the Dogecoin to a larger extent. There was a huge surge in the price of the Dogecoin. It started somewhere in 0 0.01 cent early this year or 0 0.1 cent in early this year. And it is now close to 0.3 or 0.4 cents and it even reached 0.5 cents. It was almost going towards $1. Like it's a huge surge. Someone who had made an investment, let's say in Jan or February, would have made about 100 or 1000 times. Not only that, followed by the single tweet by Elon Musk, there was a huge tweet storm in support of this particular moment, in support of this particular new cryptocurrency. Not only Dogecoin, like this also had an impact on the other cryptocurrencies as well. So this will be an interesting data set in order to find the relationship between the tweets as well as the Bitcoin price. What you can do is you can you can try to create your own data set based on the hashtags related to Dogecoin or any other cryptocurrencies and actual price of the cryptocurrencies to see if there is any impact or correlation between them. This particular data set that we are talking about has 16 million tweets from or almost 2016 to 2019. That is a huge volume of tweet that are related to Bitcoin. What you can do is you can get the price of the Bitcoin for this particular period. And what you can do is you can analyze the relationship between the tweets as well as the price of the Bitcoin. That like is there any correlation between them? Is there any tweet storm that is present in the data set that had driven the price of the Bitcoin? Some of the additional things that can be done on this particular use case is to understand the sentiment that is present in those tweets and then see if it has any impact towards the price of the Bitcoin. And it could be a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. What you can do is you can understand like what are all those sentiments and how it impacts the movement of the Bitcoin. Is there any lag between, between the tweet as well as the actual impact or is it instantaneously happening? In order to improve the accuracy, what you can do is maybe you can try to give more weightage to the profiles of users having a large number of followers and then see if that helps in maybe accurately forecasting the price of the Bitcoin or movement of a Bitcoin on a particular day. So this will be a very interesting use case and this use case can also help you to monetize. 
if you are able to catch the trend early in the cycle, you would be able to make a lot of money. And finally, some of the advantages of working on this particular use case is, as everyone knows, Twitter data is not a clean source of data. It includes many, uh, many tweets that contain noises and hence working on this particular use case will help you understand how to handle all the noises in the text data. Because in a real life scenario, most of the unstructured data will have a large number of noise. So it is important for you to know how to handle all these noises, how to remove all the noises from the actual data set and hence how to generate a clean data source that can be used for the use case. The second use case is sentiment analysis on the Amazon review data set. This is a huge data set. The recent version of this data set was published in the year 2018. It has about 233 million reviews across products related to 30 different categories. This is really a huge amount of data set that can be used to understand various insights, what people are talking about, various products that are sold on the Amazon platform. So this data set has various details. Some of the details that are captured are like who is the reviewer that is giving the uh, review, what is the product ID about which the review is happening, and what is the helpfulness of that particular review. So this is really important to understand if it is a real review or just a spam. Because if many users made a particular review as helpful, it most likely means that there is some kind of an useful information or a proof that is attached with that particular review. And those reviews needs to be focused um, more than something that has a very less helpfulness rating. It also has the product rating and what it has is it has a beta data about the product itself. So it has the product ID, the product name, product description, the technical specifications of the products also, what are all the other similar products. So it not only helps you to understand about what people are talking about a particular product, it also gives you other linked product. So the comparisons can be made in order to see how a specific product is performing as compared to the other related products. Is it performing good or bad? How is the rating? How is the price? And this data set has a huge scope. Like a lot of use cases can be implemented on this particular data set. If you are someone who is just starting with the NLP journey, then some of the initial use cases that you can work on based on this data set is, what is the average sentiment score across various products and the various product category in Amazon? And what you can do is, you can find the correlation between the sentiment score, product price, as well as the product rating to see if there is any kind of correlation between all, the, all these three. And what you can also do is you can identify the top 100 or top 50 products across each of the category based on the positive sentiment score or based on the reviews as such. And what you can also do is you can also try to get the positive reviews and the sales rant and then see if there is any correlation between them. If a lot of people are having a good word of mouth does it impact or does it improve the sales of that particular product? Does it improve the sales rank of that particular product? So these are, are some of the basic use cases that can be performed on this particular data. But as I mentioned, this particular data supports many complex NLP implementations as well. And finally, one more thing about this data set. If you find this data set is really huge for you to download and work on, what you can do is there is a smaller subset of the same data set where you have, will have the reviews for all the product categories, but you will have a limited reviews. It is in the few thousands, but it will be enough for the experimentation purpose. If you have a uh, resource crunch, what you can do is you can download this uh, smaller data set, develop all the models, and then finally, when everything is ready, Maybe you can move on to the cloud data and instance with a higher capability and execute the model on the larger data set to see what is the actual impact or what is the actual findings. The third use case is strategizing the state overflow questions based on their quality. So this particular data set has about 60,000 state overflow questions generated between 2016 and 2019. The three categories which we are going to predict are high quality po post, a low quality post with terminal edits, but it is still open. 
and low quality post without it, any edits but it is closed how having an text classification in your portfolio will be helpful a lot of organizations are going through this particular use cases some of the examples are let's say a telecom company for an example what a telecom company is trying to do is the telecom company is trying to go through the various support center called transcripts in order to understand what is the issue that has been spoken on a particular call so it is really difficult to go through all those transcripts and to map them to the right issue but having an algorithm which can classify all the transcripts or all the calls to a certain category will help in going through those data and identifying the various insights to see if there is any particular issue that is causing a lot of customers to churn it will be very helpful to understand which teams are performing well in which categories of issues and which teams need training on what kind of categories of issues that re- really helps in order to make many strategic and tactical decisions within the organization so not only telecom this particular use case can be applicable to any company that has an support center which supports various customers on multiple issues so not only that there are a lot of data that is, that is generated on the social media so people tag a company or tag a particular product and talk about all those products and hence let's say a company or a brand wants to identify all the social media tweets or all the social media messages and want to group them by the product category or based on a particular service so in order to implement this you need to do the text classification so going through this particular use case or going through this particular project will exactly help you understand what it involves in order to perform and text classification what are all the various issue how to handle all those issue what should be the methodology that should be followed in order to implement this kind of an use case so coming back to this particular use case where we are trying to categorize the quality of the state overflow questions so what can be done is some of the um, features that can be generated based on this data or like the number of words that is present in a particular post that will maybe to an extent say about like the quality of the post as well and what can be done is we can also try to it's strat the complexities of the text that is being used to describe a particular situation like how much complex words are used like how much simple words are used in that particular text the other one is use text vectorization and use it as a feature so these are all some of the ideas that can be used in order to make a better prediction or to make a better classification for this particular use case you can try to implement this particular use case that will help you not only to add an nlp project to your portfolio but it will also help you to understand what happens in a text classification what are all the typical steps what are all the typical problems that we would uh, face while implementing a text classification the fourth use case is identifying the sarcastic comments so this particular data set that i am talking about has both sarcastic and non sarcastic all the sarcastic text are taken from the onion newsletter it picks up the headlines that are sarcastic for non sarcastic it what it does is it picks up the headline from the half post news so this is an interesting data set it is a very clean data set because the two sources that we are using in this particular data set is written by the professionals there are no spelling mistakes there are no noises that is present in the data so these two data set are really clean mostly when we want to work on this kind of an use cases to identify the sarcasm the source that we use is the twitter data because a lot of data that is generated on twitter like a based like it, it might be about the organization products or it can be about any particular event that is happening and in order to identify the sarcasm it is very difficult generally if we are going to use the twitter for both the training as well as for making the prediction it is very difficult because the source is not so clean the twitter data has a lot of noises many of the tweets are as in response to a particular tweet and hence without the context it is, it is very difficult to identify whether there is any sarcasm involved in that particular text or not so what you can do is whatever be the use case that you are working on whatever be the data source that you are working on you can be working on an internal data set or a twitter data set or any other social platform data set what you can do is you can make use of this particular data as your training source because it has a quite a number of sarcastic text as well as the non sarcastic text and you can try to embed this particular data set in your source and try to implement various use cases 
The fifth and the final use case is fake news prediction. It is really important for us to identify the fake news with social media. What happens is a large number of news are being shared on the social media platform and a, a large portion of those are fake news. It is really important for the company or for various organizations to identify all the fake news and then stop it well in advance. If we take the pandemic situation, what is happening is, happening is there is a lot of misleading post, misleading news based on, based on various treatments that is causing significant damage to the people as well as to the community. And it is really important for us to identify all these fake news and then stop them well in advance. Not only that, even organizations are, needs to keep a check on the social media platform, various news plots in order to check whether there is any fake news that is using their brand or whether it is using their name because that could be a huge damage to their reputation. So how can we identify the fake news? This particular data set is a very clean data that includes both the fake news as well as the real news. It has about 20,000 texts for each of these strategies and this is a difficult use case to solve. Many organizations, many social media platforms are struggling to identify and stop all these fake news. So this will be a challenging use case for you to understand what could be the different features that can be developed on top of this particular data set in order to accurately identify and fake news versus and real news. And finally, many NLP techniques can be useful in order to extract the various insights that is present in the unstructured data set. Given that we are forecasting that 80% of the data would be unstructured data by 2025, many of the organization will also be going through the similar patterns. So it is not only the general, like the social media data that we are talking about, the many, many organization will also be having this kind of a proportion. 80% of their data set would be unstructured, like 80 to 85% of the data set would be unstructured and remaining will be the structured data. While it is important for us to get the insights from the structured data, it is very critical to use these unstructured data as well, because the unstructured data is kind of a gold mine, like it has a lot of insights and it really it requires people to look into those unstructured data and uncover all those insights. Previously, we were not having the capability to work on a large number of text data, but now with various open source advancements, like there are many NLP techniques that are available that makes our job easier to uncover the insights from the unstructured data. And hence, start with these five use cases, try to implement any one of them, add an NLP project into your portfolio that will not only help you to learn the NLP concepts, but it will also help you in your job interview because many organizations in the future will be looking for people with NLP skill set as well. So that is it for today. I hope you would have learned something new in today's video. If you like what I'm doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. See you in the next session. Bye. Until then.